Hey, what's going on? It's Mike, and I'm here with another episode of Smart Simple Digital. So today I'm gonna to break down some tech buzzwords that you probably hear a lot these days, but you might not be so sure of what they actually mean. So let's jump into it. Term number one, the cloud. So the cloud is a network of machines called servers that are used to store information and run applications over the internet. So the way that it works is that there are companies called cloud service providers and they own these servers and they make them available to companies or individuals, or I should say they lease space on these servers to companies and individuals so that they can store information there or run their applications there. The cloud is a very real thing. And there's, there's not just one cloud, but there's many clouds. There's a good chance that you probably interact with the cloud every day and you might not even know it. So things like email, stored in the cloud. If you stream music or videos, good thing that those, a good chance, the thing that those things are also out in the cloud when you're accessing them, watching, listening to music and videos. And also things like social networks. A lot of social networks are, are stored out in the cloud. So when you upload those pictures to your profiles or when you're sharing pictures on places like Instagram and Facebook, all that stuff is hosted and stored out in the cloud. And that's where it's all coming from. Number two, a content management system, also referred to as the CMS. So a content management system is a tool that's used to publish or modify or remove content from a website. And that can include text or photos or videos. The benefit of using a content management system is that it allows you to, to publish information on a site, to manage a, a website without ever having to manipulate the code. So anytime you have to make an update to the text or photos on a website, instead of uh, digging into the code and programming, you just log into the content management system. In most cases, a CMS is it's directly linked or embedded inside of your site and you log into it, and you're presented with a, a control panel. Um, and from there you can compose text, you can upload images and videos. Number three, HTML. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And it's a programming language that is the backbone of every single web page pretty much in existence. So you use HTML to give structure to a page, to indicate um, the heading or the titles on the page, the paragraphs. Every page in existence uses HTML. If you're someone who's interested in learning how to code, maybe you wanna be a web designer, web developer, that's definitely probably the first language that you should learn about, HTML. Number four, responsive design. So responsive design is a method of designing a website so that it adjusts to fit whatever screen size or platform or orientation that you are viewing it in. So a website or even an app, I should say, that's, that's responsive is going to look different. Um, it's going to look one way on, say, a full size monitor, like a desktop monitor. And then when you go view that same site or app on a mobile device, it's going to adjust to fit the screen size of that device so that it's still readable regardless of the, the smaller real estate. Also, a site or app that's, uh, that's, that is responsive is going to adjust to fit whatever mobile platform, or I should say whatever platform that it's being, that it's being viewed in. So if you're viewing it on um, an iPhone or, in, or an OS device, Mac OS device is going to look one way or iOS device is going to look one way. And then when you, just, when you uh, look at it on say an Android device, it's going to look a different way. But essentially the, the, the main concept behind responsive design is that a page or an app is going to appear readable and it's going to be laid out properly no matter where you view it. It's still going to be readable whatever screen size, whatever platform, whichever orientation you read it in. So if you're reading it with your phone upright in portrait mode, or if you're viewing your phone uh, sideways in horizontal mode, that, that app or that website is still gonna appear well laid out, still readable. If you've ever come across a site that's not responsive, what you normally get is you, you find yourself having to pinch in and out to zoom in and out on parts of the website because it just doesn't adapt. Number five, SEO which means search engine optimization. So SEO is the practice of enhancing a website so that it achieves a higher rank within search results. So whenever you run a search on, let's say Google, for example, 
Google looks within its index of web pages and it looks to find number one, all the web pages that include the keywords that you're looking for. And then it goes a step further and within that set of pages, it then looks to find the pages that appear to have the most authority or expertise around the subject that you're looking for. So there are ways that you can adjust the content on your website or the, the tags, certain tags within your website, or just the way that you, the pages on your site are organized. There are ways to adjust all those things so that search engines interpret them as being more authoritative, right? having some sense of real expertise around a particular subject area and that they appear higher within search results and ultimately attract more traffic to your site. Number six, a podcast. So a podcast is an audio broadcast that's typically organized into episodes and it's made available on the internet where people can then download it and listen to it. You can think of it as a radio show. And so these days they're podcasts on just about any subject that you can think of and they're created by just about everyone from major news organizations to celebrities to hobbyists. There are apps that you can use to discover uh, podcasts and to subscribe to them. Uh, so for example, on the iPhone, there's the podcast app that comes pre-installed and you can use that to just discover what podcasts are out there. You can subscribe to them. And when you subscribe to a podcast, it gets automatically downloaded to the app anytime one's available and you can listen to it. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. If you found this information helpful, make sure you like this video, make sure you share it as well. To see past episodes, you wanna see some more video tips from me, you can go over to my website, smartsimpledigital.com, or check out my Facebook page or my YouTube channel. And it, you might be on one of, the, one of two or three of those things right now. So I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.